welcome to the Graduate Job Podcast, your home for weekly information and inspiration to help you get the graduate job of your dreams. Welcome back everyone to the Graduate Job Podcast with your host, James Curran. The Graduate Job Podcast is your weekly home for all things related to helping you on your journey to finding that amazing job. Each week I bring together the best minds in the industry, speaking to leading authors, entrepreneurs, coaches and bloggers who bring decades of experience into a bite-sized weekly 30-minute show. Put simply, this is a show I wish I had a decade ago when I graduated. This week I speak with Brad Burton, motivational speaker, business owner and best-selling author who shares his inspirational story of how he made it in the business world and his many challenges along the way. As a warning, Brad pulls no punches with his language he uses, so if you don't like the odd swear word, it's best that you skip this one. However, if you like your motivation full, frank and straight between the eyes, then this is definitely for you. Brad covers what is holding you back from success, why working with other people is a gamble, and why you should definitely think about starting your own business. Nothing else to say but sit back, relax and brace yourself for half an hour with the one and only Brad Burton. I'm very excited today to welcome Mr. Brad Burton to the show. Brad is MD of the fastest growing business network in the world for networking, the UK's number one motivational business speaker, and also best-selling author of three of the highest rated and reviewed business books on Amazon, with 505 five-star reviews as of this morning. Brad, a very warm welcome to the Graduate Job Podcast. Hey, hello, Jimbo. Hey, listen, that 500 plus uh, five-star reviews, I'm just... I sort of discovered that about a week ago. I went, ooh, look at that. I don't know, with these books and what have you. In fact, everything, I'm just waiting for somebody to tap me on the shoulder and say, you've been found out, piss off. You know, just, no, but seriously, Jim, I'm, I'm sure we'll get to it. It's a, it's a pleasure to be on the podcast. Excellent, thank you. And now for listeners who haven't come across your work before, after hearing that introduction, um, as the author of three of the highest rated business books on Amazon, they might have images of someone with a background of Harvard Business School and MBAs, but your story and path is slightly different. Um, would you like to give our listeners a proper introduction to your business and what you do and also how you got to where you are today? Of course, I was born in 1973 uh, from, uh, over in Salford, Manchester, as you can gather from my dulcet tone, that's where I'm from. And um, I was brought up in a, a single parent uh, with my mum. Um, my dad was a heroin addict, uh, a council state background in Manchester. I ended up with no qualifications, a bit of a class clown if I'm honest. I've uh, been on the dole for about four years, I've been a, a doorman, I've cleaned chalets, I've cash in hand, many millions of gold tax man, um, you know, valeted cars, I've been a retail manager of shops and I was a marketing guy, I managed to blag myself a job, uh, 25 grand a year, blah, 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 bottom line is I now run my own business, but it wasn't always that way, I remember back in 2005 I was working for a company over in London and I was on about 30 grand a year. And uh, I, I worked out what's that long about. I'm, I'm, I'm commuting from Somerset to London. If I was to, you know, uh, take off all my costs in terms of travelling and like, so I might as well be flipping hamburgers over at Western Supermare Seafront. And it's funny because somewhere along the way, in, in, when, we, when we were employed, we blag ourselves with the headline figure. You know, you forget to take into account the two and a half hours commuting you do a day. Put that on your hourly rate, and all of a sudden, you know, you, your hourly rate drops massively. So I, I was working for a company over in London and I was just getting more and more pissed off. And I remember one evening going past a guy going in a house with electric gates and either the Mercedes or BMW, some posh car. And he's going into a house with electric gates and it was a, a marketing guy at a company. And um, as he went and turned into the house, I thought to myself, you know what, I could work 80, 100 hour weeks for this company. I'm still never be able to the frigging gates. And with that, at 30, 30, 31 year old, my whole world changed when I realised that everything that I've been told about you know, get a job, a job for life, and at least you know where you stand. It was all bullshit. You know, when you run your own business, which is what I do right now, you know exactly where you stand. Skin, get used to it. You know, so I started my own business off back in 2006, 2005, should I say, a marketing business. And I was promised, like, nine contracts from people. And then fast forward three months, I'm sat in my box room, in my underpants, aggressively waiting for the phone to ring. None of those contracts actually uh, materialised. So I started my own business off, and I did okay. Did all right. I got 28 grand. Uh, turnover in the first year. And it was a struggle. It was a struggle. I ended up delivering pizzas um, at weekends to keep my business afloat. And then that was my marketing business. Then I landed on this thing called business networking, which is a bit like a subculture. I'm not really even going to go into it too much. But I run this big 
business network group now with over 5,000 meetings across the UK every single year. It's like a membership organisation. Um, and that's my story, really, in, in a nutshell. Excellent. And this is episode 20 of the of the podcast. And so far, we've focused on the, the nuts and bolts of getting a job. So interview skills, how to ace assessment centers, how to use LinkedIn, and how to get into specific industries. Um, but in other words, you know, helping people to, to get a proper job. James, um, James, 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 what's the advantage of a proper job? See, this is the thing, right? You know, your guys here, your graduates who have spent years, I don't even know how, how many years did you spend getting a degree? Three or four. Gee whiz. Right. Listen, admirable. And lots of money as well. Right. Admirable, completely. And I'd like a degree. If a professor thought I didn't get a degree, I'd get one. If I had to do four years, now, nah, I'd rather sit in fields getting off my head on ecstasy tablets, which is what I did about most people were doing degrees in my age. But I think the point is this. You have this whole situation where, where we're told, that actually, you know, you go and get your degree, you go and get a 2 one, two, two, and that'll have a massive effect, and you'll get 30 grand basic, and then you can build on that. <clears throat> well, let me tell you something. You know, I don't have an MBA, I don't have a degree, yet I genuinely go and Google me or go on Amazon, man. You'll, you'll see I'm the highest rated business author on Amazon. You know, I didn't need an MBA for that. And sometimes, sometimes what we do, we kid ourselves that the thing that's holding us back is a qualification. You know, once again, I don't have a qualification to my name. That was a heroin addict, brought up in the council states of Manchester, blah, 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 blah. The point I'm making is how the ideal conditions. You know, my business is an international business, well in excess of a million pound and the likes. And once again, I didn't have a degree. So the thing is, with a degree, I get people coming to me for jobs that are a really congested market and they will take a twelve to fourteen thousand pound job with a degree. And that saddens me greatly. Because wouldn't they be better rather than looking for a job, looking for a client? Think about that. Rather than look for a job, rather than dicking about having CVs, making CVs and blah blah blah. What about sending a sales letter to someone? Honestly, when you come out of college or uni, you've, you've managed to live on nothing for so long anyway. So why don't you live on nothing and start your own business off and build something that is transferable? Because this is the thing, when you start a business off, I started mine off with £25,000 in debt, right? And I'm sure all you guys who've got degrees have got twenty five grand in debt. So well, well done, you're in the same position as I was when I started my business off. So I'm really sort of, uh, look, someone's got to do the jobs. I understand and I accept that. But... Honestly, do open your eyes to this opportunity that maybe, just maybe, at the course of this next 30 minutes, the, the, the opportunity that presents itself to you is one of you starting your own business off. I love the positivity and enthusiasm which <laughs> flows through all of your books. And um, the question that really struck me and I think is a really powerful one that you ask is, you know, what's your excuse? Right. What are the stories you're telling yourself that are holding you back? Well, I was telling myself that I'm a, a northern monkey. And my teacher said to me I'd never amount to anything. And up until 10 years ago, he was right. Right? He was right, no question. But I changed. I changed. I changed. I decided that I was not willing to work 80, 100 hour weeks for some, some taskmaster and, and end up at the end of my life with fuck all. Listen, I, you know, when you said to me, I'm full of enthusiasm, that's all I ever had. You know, I was like playing a game of poker with a pair of twos. I had nothing. I had a dead man's hand. But what I had was enthusiasm. I had belief. I had vision. Vision that I could make this thing happen. And that's what your guys are going to need in order to be a, uh, to start a business off. You're going to need three things. Here's what you're going to need for, uh, to start a business off: uh, a mobile phone, shoe leather, and big balls. Right? If you ain't got big balls, to get it right now. Call it a day and go and get yourself a proper job. At least you know where you stand. Tell that to the 10,000 people that just got laid off from Tesco's or the other ones from Phones for You got binned or Talk Talk or whatever it was. You know, you know exactly where you stand when you run your own business. Skin, get used to it. See, being employed, being employed is a bit like being self-employed. The difference is you've got one client. And if that client, your boss, decides they no longer want your services, you're gone. I don't care about legal law and all that shit, employment law, you're gone. So there's no security. You've been blagging, you've been told a myth, you've been blagging yourself, you've been telling yourself that actually if you get a job it's secure because this, it's not secure people, it's not secure. Look at that business, I don't even know, it was Lehman Brothers. Billion dollar business, Lehman Brothers. I, I've worked in that office over in London, which is this big posh office over in, um, uh, over in Docklands. Went overnight, people going, you know, we were previously on 100 grand, people who got degrees and so forth, went overnight, next thing, they've got themselves a cardboard box with the stuff and pissing off on the DLR. So you've got no security right now. The only security you've got is that you are always going to be there the last day of your life and you're going to do the best for yourself. Oh, I'm well, fine now, James. Let's have it. <laughs> I love the tale you tell about um, your friend Roger oh. at Tesco. 
which is a sobering tale of uh, you know what what having a proper job would, uh, would lead. Yeah, if you could, that'd be great. Funny enough, a guy <clears> that I know, a guy called Darren. Darren's a friend of mine, and he was um, he, he worked at Tesco's, and he was on their management program. Um, he'd been there about 12 years. He's done 65 grand a year, so good money by all accounts. The guy who trained him was a guy called Roger. Roger had been there years. He was on 105,000 uh, pound senior manager within Tesco Superstore, and on their um, on a Friday afternoon, it was his last day, on a Friday afternoon, one of the directors from Tesco's was coming down to drive the sort of two-hour journey to, from, from Tesco's HQ to, to the branch to give Roger a send-off in front of 100 staff and 500 uh, you know, customers on a busy Tesco superstore on a Friday afternoon. About 2 o'clock in the afternoon comes, the phone goes, ring, ring, hello, hi, is that Roger? Yes, it is, hello, Roger, it's Steve, one of the directors over at Tesco's. How are you today? Um, yeah, great, yeah. Uh, Roger, what it is, and you always know when somebody says your name followed by what it is. What it is that follows is generally called shit. Roger, what it is, I can't actually make it down today. Um, sort of run out a day, not a thousand a day, truly, you know what it's like. Um, so well, I suppose all this to say is on behalf of myself, indeed all the directors of Tesco's and all the staff and, and everyone else, thank you for all your hard work and uh, all the best. And he put the phone down. And Roger was taken back by this. And uh, he had a word with Darren, the guy who trained for 12 years, and told him that the director wasn't coming down. Darren was furious. And there's been times in your life when you've been furious, when actually you're unwilling. You're unwilling to go, you know what, when people say, keep your mouth shut, keep your head down, you go, bollocks, I'm not having this. Darren was furious. And Roger tried to stop him, but he wouldn't have it. And he, he walked straight onto a busy Tesco superstore on a Friday afternoon, really pissed off. He went straight to the centre of the store, took a big deep breath in, realised the severity about what he was about to do, that potentially, just potentially, this may well throw into uh, every question, his, his career, his, his pension and like. Took a big deep breath in, looked around, sense checked it again, and said, am I really going to do this? And he said, yeah, I'm going to do this. And you know what he did, people? Took another deep breath in, leant forward, and he stole the cake, caterpillar cake, and he pissed off into the staff room, and he cut into the cake, and him and Roger ate the cake, and then Roger walked home after 52 years of service at Tesco's. No gold watch, no whip round, no fuck all. This is what I say to you people. Are you willing on the, to, 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 to gamble your career, your best years of your life, on getting a stolen frigging caterpillar cake, or are you heading for greatness on the last day of your, your career? And the only way that you're going to know is whether you're responsible for your career. Forget the career, you're responsible for your own business because I'm telling you now, let these words ring out to you right now. Do not get to the end of your working days on your 65th birthday and think to God, I wish I would have listened to that bloke who I listened to on graduate podcast. Because this is the thing, I see so many people working their life to get to the end where they retire. And I'll tell you, one of the things I said in the book, Life Business Just Got Easier, is available at all good bookstores. Um, was this guy that, 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 you know, put into his pension all his life, worked on the tools, saved up £100,000 or 200 grand in his pension to retire and enjoy his pension. Then three days before he's due to retire, he died, died, finished, gone, over. So all that money that he'd saved on a gamble that in, when he was 65 he could enjoy, finished. What I'll ask your audience right now is this. Can you tell me what's going to happen in 25 minutes' time? Can you tell me what's going to happen in, in 25 days' time, 25 months' time? What about 25 years? Because it's a long way to start thinking about your future. Forget about thinking so far down the future that you forget about living for today, living for tomorrow, living for next week. Because this is where I'm at right now. You know, our friend, I do Brad Camps, which is like bringing people, uh, like self-development with me, 15 people. I did one the other week and I was there and the MD of a £50 million company was there. £50 million, pounds, right? Started in 2012. £50 million quid. He's the guy who's a majority shareholder of this business. And he said to me, we were talking about it, and he said, you know what? I'm going to retire in another six years. I'm going to work like crazy. I'm going to retire in six years' time. He's got children. And I said, what about this for a daft idea? Did you retire today? And rather than having this hard line where you retire in six years' time, you retire properly in 12 years' time. And actually start enjoying the next six years rather than working yourself to the bone. Anyway, could bang on and on and on that. But look, I think the point I'm making is I'm an advocate of this whole piece about taking control of your own life, taking control of your own career. Because every time that you work for someone, you know as well as I do, somebody else basically is cupping your balls. And if they decide that you're finished or they don't like your face or you did a bad job, you go. I love you. I love the message. And I think 
one problem that people have is when they hear the message is they always put blockers in, in front of themselves. So thinking, oh, well, you know, it's all right. It's all right for you. You've probably, you've probably got more money or you've probably got a better degree or a better job. James, 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 James. It's all right for me. So let me just talk to you about it. It's all right for me. Once again, you know, a 31-year-old uh, living in a mason head above a chipper, no money, £25,000 in debt, delivering pizzas. You know, so hardly, oh, that's right, I've been addicted to drugs twice. You know, it's hardly all right for me. Right? It was hardly all right for me. But I was giving myself these excuses that my life's shit, so I know what I'm going to go and do. I'm going to go and smoke some weed because my life's shit. And guess what? My life was shit because of smoking weed. And it just continued and continued and continued. And actually, my life started becoming together when my boy was born. And I realised I needed to be sensible. So actually, if you can't do it for yourself, do it for your family. Do it for someone you love. Because somewhere along the way, at 31 years old as a grown man, I couldn't do it for myself. I couldn't become an entrepreneur. I couldn't run a start a business off because I had no belief or I had no reason to do it. But then all of a sudden, so when people say it's all right for you, yes, I've got a bit of money now. I'm good now. I'm good now. But to get to where I am, which is, let's say, C, you've got to go by A and B. And A and B is the bit where people laugh at you. A and B is the bit where you're delivering pizzas. A and B is the bit where you don't want to go on, where actually you're making no money. But I've been in business now 11 years in total. And actually, for the first seven years, forget it. Didn't make a bean. Maybe nicking a thousand quid there, 200 quid there, 500 quid there, begging, stealing, and borrowing. But I'm yet to come across a self employed person that's starved to death. Starved to death. Now, my mates who were employed back then, telling me I'm crazy, I should go and get a proper job. Guess what they're doing? They're still on these daft jobs where maybe they're on 30,000 quid a year and they work the bollocks off all year. They work at weekends and, da, 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 and the boss turns on and says, hey, great news, we're going to give you a 3% uh, increase. Wow, you've got an extra 60 quid a month. Brilliant. Whereas actually what happened with me is I didn't get any increase throughout that time. But now I'm there. When actually I can retire and chill out today. I can go and play Witcher 3, which is what I've been playing with PlayStation 4 prior to this interview. I didn't have to ask a boss could I have the morning off to take my kids to the sports day the other day. This is what I'm trying to say. So you can, you can work your life in, in this safe zone where you consider it to be safe. And bear in mind, I've worked in safe jobs. And bear in mind, I've had the conversation where I've been sat down with a HR director who says, Hi Brad, please do take a seat. Um, not great news, I'm afraid, Brad. Obviously, what with the, the economic climate right now, and the, 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 I'm afraid we're going to have to let you go. But don't worry, we'll pay you to the end of the month. We only need to pay you to the end of next week, but we will pay you an extra two weeks. Well, that's fucking great, thank you. This is what I'm trying to say. And I got bored of hearing that. So now I've set control of my own destiny, and I sit in front of people and tell them that the economic climate's not great. They're going, never done it yet. But that's my point. No, definitely. And there's no better time than when you just finish university than to start your own business. Well, you're already used to living on frigging super noodles and having no money. Do you know what I mean? So, so think about it. I'm not taking a piss there. I've been hilarious, right? I'm saying you're already used to living on bare bones. Now's the time to do it, to go, right, lock it down, get your head right, plan yourself for the next three, four, five years of starting your own business off. And where, is it, well, where do you start from? Where do you start your own business off? What I would do is say, what, look at your passions, look at what you like doing. So what I like doing is waffling shit online, whether it's Twitter, whether it's forums, da, 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 da. I like playing computer games. I also like people. Right? That's why I like talking to people. I like the sound of my own voice that you might have gathered. <clears throat> so here's what I've done. I started a business off that involves me waffling shit online and meeting people. Nuts. So this is the thing. Now, you know, uh, it's not easy. Don't get me wrong. But a starting point for your audience would be to look at my books on Amazon. Uh, they're on Kindle. I brought them down for this podcast. 99 pence a piece. Right? It was 12.99 on Kindle. They're 99 pence now. Get off your ass and get off your ass too. They're 99 pence. Oh, well, I can't be bothered reading. Well, if you can't be bothered fucking reading, well, guess what? You've got no chance of getting beyond the next stage because that's your first test. That is your first test. If you can't be asked spending a pound on a book and you can't be asked reading it, spending the three hours, then guess what? You might as well go and get a proper job. At least you know where you stand. And that's what I'm trying to say. I say to people, people come to me on Twitter and they ask me questions. And I answer the question. Then they ask me another question. Then another question. They say, listen, do yourself a favour. Read the book. It all ends in there. Oh, well, I don't read. Well, you know what I don't do? I don't answer a fucking third or fourth question when someone's asking me the same questions that I spent four months writing. So this is what I'm trying to say. These things are testing you. And the fact that every decision that you've ever made has brought you to listen to this podcast is sending a message to you. Get off your ass. Make it happen. Because I don't have a qualification to my name. I don't have a degree. Right? I don't. You guys have got an advantage over me. So why don't you use that unfair advantage? And the fact that you're listening to this Says to me, you're a go-getter. Make it happen, people. Make it happen. No, I love it. And as you mentioned in the book, people have a, a hope of passive magic, of 
the ideal job just suddenly tapping them on the shoulder or the opportunity just suddenly appearing when they've got to actually, you know, you, the difficulty is in the persistence in going out and making it happen. Let me, James, if I've not delivered pizzas at 31 years old, I wouldn't be speaking to you now. I wouldn't have three books. I wouldn't have blah, 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 blah. And this is the thing with it. You know, my ideal job is doing what I'm doing right now. Right? That's my ideal job. But it was never going to exist. No one was ever going to say to me, hey, how do you fancy becoming a little bit of a media celebrity in the business field? Yeah, I love that. Well, guess what you need to do then, Brad? What's that? Work your bollocks off for 10 years and have people laugh in your face for 10 years, at which point you'll break through. Because that's the reality of it. Because when I started my business stuff, I was a laughing stock. People said I'm crazy. People said you're mad. You're mad. You're mad. You're mad. Fast forward 10 years, I'm a genius. I'm on the front cover of magazines and double page spread in the times, blah, blah, blah. Right? Guess what? That happened as a result of all the people, oh, sorry, all the things that I did whilst it seemingly people were saying it didn't work or it wasn't working. This is what you've got to do. You're not going to find your ideal job through starting and, and getting your ideal job day one. It's not going to happen. It'll be 20 years of graft, 10 or 20 years of working graft, unless you're exceptional. And even if you're exceptional, guess what? Other people are exceptional. And I say to you, this, this is the other thing about, about qualifications, but I say to you about this whole thing, Yes, you've got a 2-1 or a 2-2. Two, two. I don't even know which one's better. Right? I genuinely don't even know which one's better. Right? I don't need to one. that. I'm not bothered. Right? I mean that in the nicest possible way. It's irrelevant to me in my world. Right? And I'm not trying to underline that, but here's the thing. How many fucking people do you think have got a 2-1 right, who are going for the same job? 5, 10, 15, 20? So what's going what's gonna to differentiate you between those other people in the field? It's not going to be a 2-1 or a 2-0, whatever the hell it is. It's going to be your personality. And guess what? Guess what? I've had people that I've employed for my business that have come with a 2-1, a 2-2, and I've had people that come with no qualifications, and guess who got the job? Someone who without the qualifications. So somewhere along the way, and I'm not trying to take this away from what you've achieved, because if you achieve any sort of degree, fair play to you. But if you fail or you flunked, fair play to you, because you tried. And this is what it's about. Don't worry about it. This is not life formative. I could go and put on my CV now that I've got a 2-1, right? Because my CV might as well have a forward by J.K. Rowling. It's fucking just full of bullshit. I ain't ever using my CV again anyway. I write my own CV. When was the last time that anyone asked me for a CV in the last 11 years? Not once, right? I'm now on two TV shows filming for Sky in the next month. They never asked me for my, for my CV. They never asked if they had a degree. So this is what I'm trying to say. Sometimes we say to ourselves that these are the things that hold us back. The reason you didn't get that job was that I've only got a 2-2, not a 2-1. That's the reason. Bullshit. That was a personality. Find a way. Find a way. Ask yourself a question. What can you do today with what you've got? Stop fucking sending stupid amounts of, of letters and CVs to employers. You know what? The ones that have got me, anytime, I'll, I'll tell you, if you do want to go for a job, it is a podcast. I'm not taking nothing away from it. But if you do want to go for a job, be different, right? Because i tell you what, when you get CVs sent to you, trickling me, CV, and then they all look the fucking same, right? Oh, that's fancy paper. Well done. Go and make a bright yellow one. Right? Go make a bright yellow one in a field of you get 100 CVs, one that's bright yellow, or go and put a tea bag on there, or a, a free iTunes voucher, or whatever, say Money Talks, or you know, whatever. So shake it up, be different, put a Kit Kat in there, say, listen, I know it's probably hard work going through all the, uh, you know, all the CVs, but why don't you take a break? Shake it up, get yourself known, you know, Brad the Kit Kat Man Burton in Speech Marks, send the Kit Kat in your CV. Get yourself known if you're going for a marketing job. Stand out from the crowd because I promise you, if you're competing in a field of two ones or two twos, guess what? It's irrelevant. The thing that's going to be relevant in it when you job search is going to be your personality and how you present yourself. Be different. Excellent. And for those of you who have never seen uh, Brad before, he's famous for always wearing jeans and t-shirt, whether on TV or presenting on stage. Right. And well, I think... As you... So go on, James. So as you, as you mentioned earlier, you know, it's all about, about being yourself and whether that comes across in your CV and how you, you know, you come up with a creative application or the type of job you go for. You just need to, to be yourself. Yeah, it's a really interesting one in that I spoke, not last year, the year before at um, the business show. I did actually speak this year, but this, this story comes back from 12 months ago. I spoke at the business show um, uh, over in Excel and there's 250 speakers there, of which I'm one of them. I was one of the keynotes. And of the 250 speakers, how many do you think wore jeans, trainers, and t-shirt? <laughs> One, right? And on that basis, I was five deep. People could not get in because it was five deep to get to see me. Was it down to the t-shirt, jeans, and trainers? No. It was part of the mix. It was part of the mix. Would me, what would me wearing a suit in business prove? 
It proved that an artist go to Burton and spend 99 quid on a machine washable suit. That's about the size of it. You know, would me wearing a suit make me any more successful as a business person? No. It's bullshit. This is what I'm trying to say. We start kidding ourselves that we need a Versace belt in order to succeed. Or we need a... Shut up. So, I got booked as a result of me wearing jeans, trainers and t-shirt and everything else is associated with it. People buy people trying to get in by JTV. I've now spoke at their, uh, their site. This is that billion dollar business. Twice. Or because what? Because of, I set myself up as a personal brand and this is what your guys need to ascertain themselves and understand about themselves. What does your personal brand say about you? Does it say snooty academic? Does it say wily risk taker street kid who's done well? What does it say? Because this is what an employer like me, when he's sat opposite you, will be, will be trying to work out what sort of individual. It's a bit like when you see a Big Brother picture, a press release of a, of a photo of someone on Big Brother. You look at that picture and you get a rough idea as to what that person is. Blonde hair, big tits, sassy. Right? You know, you just you, 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 you paint a picture. And this is what you will be painting a picture every time you present yourself, either in the business capacity or as a job interview. One of the things you talk about in your book quite a lot of with having your own business is the importance of having a having a why having a reason that's going to get you up in the morning you know get you up when it's five o'clock in the morning and it's dark and get you out there and making making things happen yeah oh totally and, and, and my why i never had one my why back in the day was to go and get stoned in, and party at weekends that was my why you know that was my why and i ended up living for those weekends where you look forward to uh, 6 p.m you know and then party time until sunday and then you feel like shit until wednesday you know that was my that was my why Back then, and then all of a sudden, family comes along, and my why now is about being sensible and creating, not a role model, because I don't consider myself a role model, but create a, a, a home and a, a stable environment, and, and a dad that the, the boys, I've got three, two boys and a young girl, um, you know, can look up to, and honestly go, you know what, this is my dad, and, and I, that's what I can be. Because once again, it, you know, in terms of my toolkit, I didn't have anything conventional to allow me to succeed, but if I look at anyone, if you think about... And any of your audience here, listeners, looking at what you've got in, in your toolkit. My toolkit was, I was street savvy. I was, I'm a risk taker. You know, all these sort of things have been massive qualities that you can't sort of teach someone. And I think I've used every every element of what I stand for. And the fact is, you and I are talking now, doing 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 this interview. You know, ten years ago, I couldn't have done this. But what's happened over the last ten years? I built that experience up. I built that experience up and I'm now climbing myself. See, 10 years ago, I was great at chatting girls up. Fabulous, right? Great at chatting girls up and making joints and, and getting stoned. Not so good at it now, to be honest, because I'm married and I'm behaving myself. But what I'm trying to say is whatever you focus on, you apply it. And this is the thing, if you've only got a, like a like bandwidth, if you've only got bandwidth in terms of what, what are you applying your bandwidth to? Are you applying your bandwidth to being Mr. Cool when you go out on weekends? Well, that's great. But you've got less bandwidth to apply yourself at being good at business or good at jobs or whatever it is. So you've only got 100% of resource. You need to define the black computer game. You need to define where you apply your resource. And right now, I think I'm applying 50% of my life to business, 50% of my life to family. I think it was as, as uh, the, the equilibrium was probably 85% business, 15% family um, as recent as three years ago. So I managed to get that balance right in my, in my life. And when I say yeah, balance, what I do is, is I do what I want when I want. That's the reality of it. So, so if I can't be asked working, I won't work. I'll go and play computer games. If I want to work, I'll put the computer games down and go and work. So I'm working at optimum performance with everything. Whereas when you're employed, you've got to sit there till half five pretending to work. You know, quarter past five, thinking fucking hell, 15 more minutes to go. Tap 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 tap. Only five more minutes to go. Just pretending to work. What a waste of everyone's life. Waste of employers' time. Waste of your life. But that's what we do in, in this world. So my why. It's to make a positive difference to my family. It's also to take my kids to Disney World. I take them to Disney World every year. We're on a wonderful holiday there. And that's like, when you think, working class lad, Manchester, no one wanna go to Disney World on these 18 day, 21 day vacations. 10 years ago, how would I have managed to do that? It would have been, you know, it would have been okay for everyone else who was there. But somewhere along the way, the decisions that I've made, that I've made, have brought me to a position where I can do just that. And you mentioned in the in the intro when I was uh, I was reading out the the list of achievements, and you said you know you're waiting for someone to tap you on the shoulder, oh, yeah. and I think that imposter syndrome is such a common thing, but people don't realise how common it is that everybody feels like that. And you know, I'm still waiting for someone to tap me on the shoulder and say, well, "Why are you doing a podcast?" Well, you know what, this is the thing, and you, you mustn't let it drag you down. I sort of say it flippantly now because I realise actually, if you can do the job, you're qualified. 
you know, when I'm doing the job, when I'm getting booked by these companies, I mean, I when I, I, I do motivational speaking, and people can Google me and find videos and stuff of, of me speaking there. There's a good one, actually, at uh, a university called uh, Google Brad Burton Books, B-U-C-K-S. That's a belter. But um, I had well-meaning people and informed people telling me that I could never be a motivational business speaker because you've got big forearm tattoos, you look like a drug dealer, Shave you dead, you know, you wear jeans and trainers, what you need to do, Brad, is cover up those tattoos, wear a nice crisp suit and, uh, you know, and nice shoes, and you need to walk to the left to, to be an orator. And you, nonsense. When I spoke at Bentley a few weeks back, I looked left and I looked right when I was on stage and I said, those people that give me that advice, I don't see them speaking here. So sometimes, sometimes, you just got to do things your way, which is what I do. So the imposter syndrome, nah, not anymore. I just play up to it. You know the main business is, um, of yours is, is for networking yeah. as well as as well as the writing. Um, what advice would you give to you know students and graduates who maybe have a fear of networking as something which is, you know, can strike fear into the heart of otherwise confident people? How can you start networking straight out of university? Well, you know what, um, <sighs> when you think about networking and being fearful and that, you know, I, I was the same. So it's not like a, a, I'm, I'm some you know uber charismatic. Uh, confident person when it comes to networking because I wasn't and I'm still not in some respects I don't really share that often but I'm not I don't go into and go oh hello everyone look at me nah so I've got the same nerves that everyone has and the thing is what happens in networking people get this wrong they all turn up you meet someone for two seconds and go oh here you go James here's my card if you get me any leads or referrals I'll give you 50% uh, on the referral fee and then I turn to the next person and say the same and the next person nonsense let me ask your audience this would you pass a lead, a referral, a job, a contact to someone you don't like, someone you don't know, someone you don't trust yet? And the answer to that is, of course not. So on that basis, just think, the reason that people pass you leads, you referrals, you jobs, and you contacts are people like you, they know you, they trust you. Don't expect others to forgo the same checks that you're doing. So that's the key to networking. Go there with no preconceptions other than just getting out of the house, about just getting to know yourself, getting over those nerves. Don't go there and think you're going to land a 20 grand job straight away because you ain't. It's a myth. I can give you stories of people landing a 20 grand job day one, but in the round, it doesn't happen. So let's not even go there and pretend it does. You know, so this is the key to networking. Start doing it, but do check out my organisation. We do have groups everywhere across the UK for networking with digit4networking.biz. Excellent. And all the links and everything we've uh, discussed will be linked to in the in the show notes on graduatejobpodcast.com. Ah. So, Brad, we're, it's been a whirlwind half hour and uh, we're running out of time. So just moving on to the uh, lightning question round. Um, what one book would you recommend that listeners should read? There's a book that changed my life back in the day when I had nothing. Um, uh, 20 years ago, I was struggling, down and out, effectively, as near as damn it. And a um, book called 23 Steps to Achievement. And it's also called 23 Steps to Success. Different, same book different titles for whatever reason, produced in 1976 by a guy called Robert J. Lumsden. You know, it's a little bit out of date now in that, you know, your wife should have your dinner prepared for five people all that, right? <laughs> but the principle is solid, and I can't help but think that I've, 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 I've might get up your ass books and stuff. I'm quite formative reading those books, and I think they might have had a stay on there. The guy's dead now. I, I got a private investigator to, to find him, to thank him for, for helping me when I had nothing. But Robert J. Lumsden... Um, 23 Steps to Achievement or 23 Steps of Success massive influence on my life excellent I'll, um, I'll definitely read oh, it on the side $2.99 on Amazon amazing bargain can't go wrong with that and uh, Brad what one website would you recommend uh, listeners check out um, Twitter you know what I mean I'm not being facetious uh, Twitter Twitter is the the, the absolute um, communication tool of now and I, well, I don't have time to Twitter. No one's interested in the fact that I've had a cheese sandwich. Well, look, guess what? I've got 114,000 people that are interested in the fact that I've just walked my dog vlog. So Twitter for me is by far the communication tool that you should be involved in because there's a conversation that's happening uh, whether you're involved or not. Twitter, 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 Twitter. Definitely recommend. Uh, definitely agree as well. And uh, this is, you know, Twitter's how I got in touch with uh, with Brad. Um, you know what so what it does. It's like a Trojan horse. You can just contact anyone. And as long as you say the right thing, you're going to get picked up. So, so you know, the old days, you had to ring the gatekeeper and get through. Forget that. Twitter, at Brad Burton. I have Brad. We've got, a, a, you know, do you fancy going on a graduate po- job podcast? Yes, please. Done. 
you know, Twitter's massive, and, and from a job hunt perspective, it's great as well. But do all you've got to start doing is start following employers that you're interested in, or people who work there, and just start, you start like chatting people up, that principle. <laughs> No, that's, a, that's a good way to look at it. And finally, what one top tip would you uh, give to listeners that they can implement today? Be yourself, right? Be yourself. Because somewhere along the way, once again, go back to that bandwidth. If you're spending 20% of your time or 20% of your energy being something you're not to try to appease people or to, to, to make people happy or to, to be more employable, then guess what? You're only 80% you. And that means that actually you're failing. So my life started coming together when I spent 100% of my time being 100% me, and people don't like me for being me, fuck off. I couldn't give two shits. My life's okay without those people. And the world's a big place. And people say, well, your style's not for everyone. Well, guess what? You show me one person whose style is for everyone. But we're all individuals. So why don't you just embrace that individuality and be you? Brad, it's been an honour to have you on the show. Before we finish, what's the best way for people to get in touch and to find out more about your work? Google my name, Brad Burton, simple as that. I am on Twitter always and YouTube and stuff. But um, Twitter, get, please do get hold of me on Twitter and say hello, say you listen to the job podcast and, and, and share it as well. Like I say, you're trying to make a positive difference here and I hope in some respects that some people out there would go, you know what, maybe, just maybe, the self-employment route is a more safer bet than the what we perceive to be a safe bet of getting a real job. Brad, thank you very much for your time. Cheers, friend. Bye. There you go. Phew. Many thanks again to Brad for his time and honesty. He covered a lot there, so it'd be well worth hitting the rewind button and going back over it again. There was uh, so much to take in. Three things that really resonated with me. The first is his question, what's your excuse? Now, we all have stories that we tell ourselves that limit what we do and hold ourselves back. Thinking personally for me, job-wise, there was two places I really interested in working. One was Goldman Sachs and one was MI5, but I never got into both. You know why? I never applied. As I was telling myself at the time, there was no point applying as I'd just get rejected. Now that might well have been the truth, but now I'll never know. So looking inwards at the stories and excuses you tell yourself is a difficult task, because some of them can be so deeply ingrained. Brad talked about the phrase, it's alright for you. It doesn't matter what school you went to, what university you went to, what grade you got, how rich your parents are. It's all just an excuse that you're telling yourself. And have a think about what the excuses are that are holding you back and begin to recognise them for what they are. Just stories. And once you've done that, you've got the power to change those stories. The second key thing for me is on starting your own business. And how as a current student or recent graduate, there will never be a better time for you to start your own business. Brad mentioned you needed just three things. A phone, shoe leather and big balls. Well, I think much more important than the last two is internet access. For literally just a couple of pounds a month through a service such as Bluehost, you can have multiple brilliant professionally hosted websites. I loved his quote, don't get a job, get a client. If people invested as much energy into creating a business as they did looking for work, they'd be well on the way to success. Take out the show notes and click on the link to Bluehost. You'll be surprised just how cheap and easy it is to set up a website and you can be selling to the world within hours. And for me, this is a risk-free venture. If it doesn't work out, then what, you can just get a graduate job again in a couple of years' time. And in my mind, you'll be a stronger applicant if you're applying two or three years down the line than you will if you're applying straight after university. And it'll also look great in your CV to have that you've spent a couple of years running your own business. In an interview situation, when asked, you know, what have you been doing since graduation? And you can say to the interviewer, well, you know, I've been running my own business. The interviewer will be fascinated and impressed. And just think of all the amazing competency and skill-based answers you'll have up your sleeve should you ever have to go for a job again. Do it while you get the chance, before mortgages, marriages and all those boring things begin to tie you down. And finally, the third point, and it's one that many previous guests have touched upon. Be yourself. No matter what you think about Brad or his style, he's honest. He knows who he is, and as he said, if you like it, that's great. If you don't, He doesn't care. Think about who you are and what's going to make you happy. If every time you put a suit and tie on you feel that you're suffocating inside, working for the civil service might not be the best fit for you. Or if you've been a born entrepreneur all your life, don't hide it. Find a career and job, whether working for yourself or anyone else, that's going to align with who you are, what your personal brand is and what your style is. And most importantly, 
Once you know who you are and what you want to do, don't let anybody tell you otherwise. So there you go, episode 20. A slightly different episode today, but I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, said Brad your appreciation via Twitter, at Brad Burton. And definitely check out his books. My favourite is his third one, Life and Business Just Got Easier. For a full transcript of everything that we've discussed and all the links, check out the show notes at graduatejobpodcast.com slash arse. Do get in touch with us on Twitter at gradjobpodcast. And if you've enjoyed the show, please leave a review on iTunes or Stitcher Radio. As I say every week, it's the best way other than sharing us with your friends to show appreciation for the podcast, and it helps massively in the rankings on iTunes. Also, if you've not already subscribed via iTunes or Stitcher Radio, you need to sort that out. It's the easiest way to get each episode delivered to you for free and to make sure you don't miss a thing. Join us next week when I speak to tech guru Prash Majmuda, as we discuss data science. I hope you enjoyed the episode today, but more importantly, I hope you use it and apply it. See you next week.